Braille is going to have to play an ever-growing role as part of a balanced transportation network, uh, whether we're talking about moving goods or people. Each citizen, on the average, accounts for about 40 tons of freight that has to be hauled each year. Now, anticipating this population growth of an additional uh, 70 million people, you do the math. You're talking about 2.8 billion tons of additional freight that's going to have to be moved over the next couple of decades. How are we going to do that? We believe that it's apparent that given some of the advantages that freight rail has, that we need to actually grow the share of freight goods that move by rail uh, in order to again ensure that uh, we improve, uh, uh, you know, make reductions in uh, congestion, improve air quality, and reduce consumption of oil. For the first time, we have a president saying that rail needs to be part of the uh, surface transportation program. Uh, you know, and the fact that he's already proposing uh, an additional uh, 50 billion dollars in transportation infrastructure, and again, that rail is an important part of that. Um, you know, understanding that this is a decades-long build-out, much like the interstate highway system, uh, we're going to have to ensure some predictability uh, as far as uh, a, a revenue stream uh, in order for the program to be lo uh, viewed legitimately. But uh, uh, you know, we're, we're hearing the right commitments from the president. It's imperative that there be strong partnerships between FRA and, uh, and the states, uh, the state DOTs. Uh, you know, history shows us again that the states played a, you know, a, a critical role, preponderance of the, 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 the construction of the interstate highway system and our roads network. And uh, the same type of relationship is going to have to exist with the advancement of, of passenger rail. Again, if we're going to move an additional 70 million people in the next two decades, if we're going to haul an additional 2.8 billion tons of freight, uh, we're going to have to make sure that uh, there's good, uh, good commitments by the states and a strong relationship with the federal government. We need to make absolute certain as we move forward that we do no harm uh, to what is uh, an absolute world-class freight rail network. Relative to the initial difficulties in states, you know, negotiating agreements with the class ones, um, you know, it's important to understand that this is a new program. And so obviously there's always a lot of concern and a lot of fear. Uh, it takes time for relationships to mature. Uh, it takes time to understand all the facets of the program. Uh, but uh, BNSF and Washington State have, uh, have reached uh, you know, a good memorandum of understanding. Uh, there's been some strong agreements uh, reached in, uh, in Vermont and uh, uh, up in Maine. So progress is being made and uh, projects are in the ground going forward today. We consider this a living document, one that will evolve. And that's because of the serious commitment uh, that this president has made to developing both passenger and freight rail. Uh, if the commitment wasn't so serious, it would be easy to just put together a document and set it on the shelf. We need to ensure that that doesn't happen. Understanding that this is a decades-long build-out, we need to make sure that the document continues to evolve each step of the way uh, as we advance implementation.